What is up guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode. Today we are here at Academy Sports and Outdoors and I have a special guest with me. Who do we have here? Mr. Lojo that Fisher guy. himself. That guy. Look at this. <laughs> I don't even need to say this. I don't even need to say this, but his channel is gonna be linked down below in the description. What Lojo and I are gonna be doing today is going in here and explaining to you guys if we were gonna go buy some, some stuff for wintertime fishing. He's gonna do his, what do you think, Bob? Five yeah, winter fishing. Five. Yeah, like five baits. Yep, five baits. Techniques or yeah. whatever. Five baits for winter fishing, and then I'll do my five. They may be similar. They may be different. I don't know. I live in Florida. He lives in Alabama. So let's get in here, get into the fishing section, and let's figure this out. Who's gonna go first? Yeah, yeah. That's my home academy, so I'll, I'll go first. We're on home turf right here. <laughs> Lojo's going first. Oh, <laughs> goodness. There's one pair left. The dude. fish slips. Dude, you should totally get those. And wear them in today's video. The fish slips. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Where where are we gonna start? I don't know. Where are we? Where's the lure start? I guess over here, huh? Well, there's like combos and there's lures everywhere. This is a big academy. This is massive. I was just telling, I was just telling Lojo. This place is the fishing selection here is more than any other academy that I've seen. So this so is wait, wild. you don't have an academy, right? No, no, no. It's so not where you live. The closest academy to me is 75 miles away. Oh, and well, Powell's. basically you don't have one. Yeah, but if it's that far away, because I ain't driving that far. Not for get, not to go to a academy. Fishing tax. But this is like Lojo said. This is his home turf, his home academy. So uh, I guess Lojo, we'll find some baits, or we'll find where they're at, and you uh, you take it away. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Lojo, you're up first. Show me and and the Yak Squad. The, uh, the five lures you would use for okay. wintertime fishing. I'm gonna start out slow, okay? So, look, the Yak Squad. Yeah. Y'all are just gonna have, just trust me, okay? These are the, the two least sexy of the five lures, but I'm gonna show them both to you at once. And just because they're not sexy does not mean they don't catch fish, because they do. I've seen people catch big fish doing this, so don't knock it until you try it. All right, here we go. First thing right here. This is called a little Ned lock, or maybe some people call it a mushroom head jig, but basically it's a Ned rig jig. Okay, what you do is you take a little worm and you put it on there. I wish I could like bust this thing open and just like you gotta <laughs> show it for him. Yeah, I better not do that. What's the best way to describe a Ned rig? Like it's just it's a tiny little uh, worm, uh, 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 one third of a Senko, one third of a Senko, exactly. Which like the Guggens make up the rattle and Ned. Yep. Uh, I think Z Man make it uh, their own worm for this. It's a third of a Senko on a little jig head. It falls down to the bottom real slow because they make them really light and you just kind of shake it and drag it along. That thing will smash bass. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys was a drop shot. And you guys should know at least what a drop shot is, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I use to do a drop shot. First thing you're gonna need is a little drop shot weight. These are kind of like little cylinder weights. These are pretty light. I mean, you can use any weight you want. It doesn't matter. You just, just use something you can use. They make tungsten ones now. This one's lead. You got this bad boy right here. Then you're going to need, oh, perfect. Look at that. Gamagatsu drop shot hook right there. You'll notice it's a real small, real sharp hook. You're going to have the hook right here. <laughs> you have to tie a special knot with a leader, and that way the weight's down here. And basically, you're just shaking the drop shot with the weight on the I'll bottom. Be the, I'll be the worm. Yeah, be the worm. <laughs> you're just shaking the drop shot. The worm is, is basically floating above the weight, so it's about a foot off the bottom or however long you tie that leader. It could be three feet off the bottom, it could be six inches off the bottom, whatever. Um, you can use literally any worm with that. I've seen people drop shot a Senko before. You can use a finesse, like a Zoom finesse worm. Once again, you could use a Guggen, like a drag and drop worm, which is made for drop shotting, real short, real thin worm. But both those techniques, like I said, are not very sexy. We're gonna move on to the sexy stuff right now, but they will catch fish. I'm telling you right now, if you have stubborn fish in your pond, your lake, you know where they are, but you can't catch them, dangle that in their face and just let it sit there and just shake it nice and easy. They'll eat it. The next one, we're starting to get into the, the sexy lure category. So this is what we call wild cat chick. I'm just kidding. This is, Whoa. oh, God. Whoa. <laughs> dude, do you smell that? Yeah, I'm from here. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not even kidding. I didn't think it was going to smell like anything. I just did that for the camera, but Wow. It's on your hands for the rest of the day too. Oh God, okay. Yeah, that's not what I was gonna show you and now I'm paying for that cruel, cruel joke. The next one, we're, we're kind of been doing bottom baits, right? These are baits that are gonna be on the bottom of the water column. As you guys know, you got bottom, middle, and top. So we're starting to work our way up to the middle. What we need is a jig and not just any jig. I like to do a smaller jig when it's cold. Okay, so let's just say this, for example. 
like a little bitsy flip right here. This is like a 3 16th ounce green pumpkin. Color doesn't matter. That's gonna depend on your water clarity. You guys should know that. Or the time of the day, or what, you know, what kind of fish your fish are eating, or what kind of forage your fish are eating. Those are all factors that go into it. But green pumpkin is a pretty gnarly color that's gonna work in most situations. I like to cast this thing out, drag it real slow. You can drag it, you can hop it, you can even swim it if you want to. So that, and then that's where you start getting into the middle of the water column. When you start swimming that jig, looks like some kind of a fish or a creature that's trying to swim away from that bass. Really love to pair with this thing, any kind of a crawl or chunk trailer, something with claws that are gonna flap when it moves. Uh, the Guggen Squawk Crack and Crawl, um, Zoom makes a, a speed crawl that's really good. What are some other good crawlers, TJ? I mean, there's, what are like a good chunk? I mean, I don't even know. What's that chunk called that, uh, it literally looks like a chunk and it has two cl clappers on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I don't, I don't know who makes it, but. I don't either. Yeah, that, those, uh, those, that'll work too. It's a little bit smaller profile than an actual crawl yep. lure. Um, you can get as creative with it as you want to. As long as it's got two flappers, and you can match the color, you can do the exact opposite. I've seen people take green pumpkin jigs and put black and blue trailers on there. So. There's really no rules when it comes to that. It's all about just finding what works. But now we're starting to work our way into the middle of the water column, which takes me perfectly to my next lure. Boom, jerkbait, guys. White jerkbait, right here. Brand, don't care. White jerkbait for me. Now, this, remember, this is for me. I live in the Southeast, so shad is a big time forage for me in ponds and lakes. But even if you don't have shad, I don't even think it matters that much. What matters is this bait right here, excels in the middle of the water column. You're gonna cast this thing out. Now there's a bunch of different kinds. This one right here looks like a, a shallow diving, like a three to five foot suspending jerk bait. So you're gonna cast it out. It's gonna float. Well, as soon as you start popping it with your rod, pop, pop, it's gonna dive down and it's gonna stay in that middle water column. Okay, and as you pop it, it's just gonna kind of go crazy in the middle water column. Yeah, three to five foot depth. See, I know what I'm talking God, about. Look, I was just looking at it and I said three good. to five foot. Man, look at that. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Pro YouTube fisherman right here, guys. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of jerkbait my entire life because it just is one of those intimidating lures that just wasn't really my speed. But I'm telling you guys, this time of year, if the water's cold, that pop, pop, pause, and just letting it sit and slowly float back up, it is such a deadly presentation for those suspending fish. It's what fish do when it gets cold. They'll, they'll either be on the bottom or they'll be suspended. And school's just kind of sitting there. And this, this thing right here, this will catch up. The last lure, since we did cover the bottom of the water column pretty heavily and we covered the middle some, we might as well cover the top too because just because it's cold doesn't mean you can't catch top water bass because you certainly can. One of my favorite ways to do it is with a top water spook, AKA a walking bait, something that's gonna float and as you twitch your rod tip really quick, it's gonna go It's just gonna, it's gonna walk the dog. It's actually gonna make that exact same noise too, doesn't it, TJ? Yeah. See, you hear that? Real mm. loud, you know, but it floats. That means you can stop it when you want to, which is another 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 way to utilize the pause, like a pop, 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 pause. You know, I really love doing that. Color-wise, it's hard to go wrong with the white, or this is like a bone, it's like an off-white, but anything imitating shad or bait fish. I mean, that's that's a common theme. I mean, you could do something like this that imitates more of like a, maybe like a bluegill or a golden shiner or something, which might work down where you live, yep. TJ, like that golden shiner color. And that's kind of the main forge down there. But sometimes fish will go shallow or certain times of the day, they will go shallow looking for food. And you may just catch the big fish with this right here. You may not get as many bites as you will with the drop shot, the Ned Rig or the jerk bait, but the quality of fish, if a fish is gonna come up and blow up on something, this might catch your biggest fish of the day. So TJ, I see, I, I raised you my five wintertime lures. Let's see your five wintertime lures. All right guys, moving on to my top five winter fishing or cold water fishing lures. We're gonna start with a big fat jig, okay? Like Lojo said, he likes to use a smaller presentation, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, that will actually, I believe, entice more bites rather than quality bites. So if you need numbers, you can definitely, I feel like, use that smaller jig and catch those numbers. Uh, to entice those big, thick, fat, lethargic largemouth <laughs> bass, uh, I'm gonna go with a really dark colored uh, football jig, a super heavy, this is a three quarter ounce jig right here. And uh, you can put any kind of trailer on it you want to. You can put 
a, uh, a crack and crawl or uh, you know a zoom creature or uh, uh, what is it called reaction innovation skinny beaver i think it's called yeah. anything any any sort of creature bait like that as long as them arms are on the back and they're flat mm -hmm. it's going to create that action that you need to catch those uh deep water fish but this is uh this is bait number one we are at the, the bottom of the water column right now so let's go ahead and start bringing our way up in the water column yeah all right, guys, next up, we have lipless crankbaits, okay? Now, these, no, what I like to do is uh, fish these specific colors, this specific color, this red crawfish-looking color uh, in colder water. I don't know what it is. It's just a personal preference, I guess. I've caught more and bigger fish on this exact color in colder water uh, than any other color that I've used. So, not sure where that, why that is. I don't know if you guys are, if you guys are, fish biologist, <laughs> fishologist, then just let me know down in the comments why that is. But I've had the most success in, in cold water using lipless crankbaits with that, that red color right there. Yep. Um, so with that being said, we are gonna move on to bait number three. The next bait, the third bait, we're gonna have a all white spinner bait with silver willow leaves on it, okay? Now, one thing I wanna point out, not the same color bait, obviously, but if, if you take a close look, the size of the eyeballs are different. Now. Uh, Alex Rudd and myself had a conversation not too long ago about the size of the eye of your bait getting more bites just because it gives that bass more of a target to lock onto when it can see those baits eyes. So I'm going to be experimenting with that uh, here very soon. Bigger eyes, smaller eyes. I'm going with this bait all day long. Uh, this obviously is not a bad bait, not a bad color. Uh, but for me personally, I would choose this all white with silver. Where I live, it catches the most fish uh, and these big fat red eyes. <laughs> also, also helps the trick. You can actually also look over here. If you notice something, I literally just looked over and noticed this. Look how big these eyes are. So that may be, we may be onto something, Yak Squad. We may be onto so something. So the Wahoos might be the best of them all. <laughs> you never know. Dollar ninety nine Wahoos may make you scream Wahoo. You never know. But all right, we're gonna move on to bait number four. Moving on to bait number four, what I'm gonna be choosing is a swim bait, okay? Now, this specific bait, I bought this the other day and to, to make another swim bait showed on episode with in the same exact color, same exact size and everything. But a big swim bait in winter with, you know, fish in winter time, colder water, you're really gonna attract those bigger fish, those fish that have just enough energy to seek out a good, healthy, thick meal uh, to help get them through the cold water, the cold weather and stuff like that. So big swim bait, uh, you know, this is no giant swim bait by any means, but a big swim bait is definitely, definitely gonna get you those wintertime bites without a doubt. You may be out there all day and you may get one or two bites instead of getting, you know, 30 or 40 like you would in the spring or the summer, but those one or two bites that you're gonna get are most likely gonna be bigger fish. So moving right along to our last wintertime bait is going to be a wacky rig Senko. Now, the reason I say this, I went and fished Gary Yamamoto's pond in February 2018, and I was struggling all day to catch fish. I literally drove five and a half hours to go fish there, and then had to drive five and a half hours back to where I was. I'm oh, making no. a video here. So what Gary told me when we went and had lunch with him that day earlier in his little clubhouse thing is he told me, he handed me a bag of Senkos, black and blue Senkos to be exact. He said, go put these on a wacky rig and go be patient. I was out there fishing with three or four other guys. Uh, granted, I didn't catch a fish. One of the guys I was standing with, throwing the wacky rig, all of us were, black and blue, and he plucked up a six pounder. So, and this is this is all four of us fishing uh, from 6 a.m. that morning, and this was going on 3 p.m. that afternoon. Nobody had caught anything. So, the, the man, the myth, the legend spoke, we listened, and uh, I don't even remember his name, but he uh, ended up catching a six pounder at Gary Almodo's ranch. How cool is that? But anyways, that is going to complete both Lojo and I's top five winter baits or cold water bass fishing baits. So, now what do we do? I don't know. We probably should go fishing with now, all this information that we have. With this information that Lojo <laughs> and I have spoken today, we're going to take this and we're going to go fishing. So, stay tuned for that video on the channel. So, with Lojo's list and my list being somewhat similar but somewhat different at the same time, what would your guys' top five winter fishing or cold water baits be for largemouth bass? Uh, let me know down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to both Lojo and myself. Notification bell for both Lojo and myself. And thumbs up on the video for both Lojo and myself. Thanks again for watching, guys. And we'll catch y'all next time.